Hey guys, uh, I am uh, Michael Keel, uh, co-founder and captain of Boat Planet. Uh, by a show of hands, how many here have ever owned a boat? Okay, how many of you guys have a friend or family member that owns a boat? Okay, better. The rest of you guys need better friends. <laughs> so, Boat Planet uh, is a uh, web platform that connects boaters with trusted and reviewed marine professionals. Um, when I first kind of started getting involved in boating, um, basically my parents had a boat, loved being out on the water with them. Um, one day I thought, hey, time for me to buy a boat. So five years ago, bought my first boat um, and found it really difficult to keep the thing on the water. Always seemed to have problems with the thing. So I uh, noticed three very specific problems here. Uh, number one, boats are notorious for being a money pit. Always in need of something, you know, upgraded, fixed, something like that. Boaters often joke that BOAT stands for break out another thousand. It's not a joke though, because trust me, it's very expensive. Uh, number two, kind of similar to home contractors, trusted marine professionals are hard to find and not easy to hire. So there's no like Angie's List, Home Advisor, um, Thumbtack, if you ever use platforms like that. That doesn't exist for our industry. And number three, um, marine professionals have very limited resources when it comes to advertising. So some of these guys resort to, let's say, you know, taking a picture of their business card and posting it to Facebook. Um, a lot of their websites literally still have counters on them, like they're from like 2001 or something like that. Uh, so those are those are some of the problems that we're trying to solve here. Uh, current options: people are using word of mouth, uh, boating magazines, and generic online platforms like Yelp and Facebook um, to find service providers right now. Um, we thought there had to be a better way. So uh, we create Boat Planet. So Boat Planet makes it easier for boaters to um, repair, fix, or clean their boat. Um, boaters can get on our platform and they can search for like any kind of service they're looking for. We've got over 230 different service categories on our site. And they can find a local marine professional in their area on our site. Um, marine professionals can also more easily showcase what they do and um, advertise to a much larger and much more targeted audience than them just putting a generic ad out there. A uh, couple things that really excited me about the boating market. So, number one, you'd probably be surprised to find out there's more than 12 million boats in the United States. That's actually one out of every 10 homeowners. Uh, there's also more than 34,000 marine businesses in the United States that service and maintain these boats. And recreational boating has an economic impact of more than $170 billion per year. That's actually 2% of our country's GDP. The reason why it's so high is a lot of these products, a lot of these services are still actually made in the United States. And then another stat that I thought was very relevant to our platform because it's very much based on reviews is that 85% of consumers out there trust online reviews as much as a personal referral. Um, so when we launched, we decided to run a pilot program in one market to kind of prove product market fit instead of just launching this thing nationwide. We said, let's make sure it works in at least one market here. Uh, we chose Lake of the Ozarks, uh, a couple reasons. Number one, I have a Facebook group for boaters of Lake of the Ozarks, over 33,000 members in that group. Uh, number two, it's also voted as the number one recreational lake in the United States. So since launching, we've um, brought more than 200 marine professionals in that local market on our platform. It's actually more than 80% of the entire marine market at Lake of the Ozarks. Uh, we've also delivered more than 1,200 leads for these businesses since we launched, so the platform is definitely working. And we've generated more than 350,000 unique users to our site since we launched. Keep in mind, this is one market. So that amount of traction, that amount of visitors, users in one market is pretty successful. Uh, since then, we actually, for the past couple months, have been um, kind of scraping and gathering data, cleaning data uh, to bring more than 3,000 marine businesses on our platform across the United States. Uh, so we're now in almost every single city market out there. Um, We've got more than 230 different service categories. This is everything from, I need somebody to repair my dock, to I need somebody to fix my boat, to I need a new lift for my boat, literally anything you can think of from the boat dock to the anchor of the boat. Um, and we're in over 115 actual boating markets right now. By boating markets, I mean Lake of the Ozarks, South Florida, uh, Lake Tahoe, actual, an actual physical boating market, not just a city. So, how do we make money off of this? Um, well, we basically have a monthly subscription model, kind of similar to like the Knot 
or House or Home Advisor, very similar kind of model, where basically our pros can pick from three different, um, three different monthly kind of plans that offer them additional uh, uh, marketing support as well as exposure in their local market. Um, and our pricing ranges from a free plan, we've got a $99 a month plan, and it goes all the way up to a premium plan for $250 a month. And as we kind of continue to grow and add more value, our pricing's gonna obviously increase. You know, platforms like ours, let's say Trulia's, your Zillow's of the world, they didn't start out charging $1,000 a zip code like they do now. They probably started out a couple hundred dollars for a zip code back in the day. Um, so once we're able to capture 15% of the market, we'll have more than 5,100 paying pros, paying on average $500 a month, which comes out to more than 30 million in annual recurring revenue. Some things that kind of set Boat Planet apart from any kind of competitors out there. Um, we're first to market, so when we launched, we didn't have any competition. Um, so we've got a proven business model, very similar to House, very similar to the Knots, you know, platforms that are valued at billions of dollars. Um, we've got a partnership with Boat Setter, which is, they're like the Airbnb of boats. Um, they just raised over $30 million in funding and they said our number one problem is keeping these boats on the water, keeping them, keeping them maintained, fixing them when somebody runs them into a dock or something like that. So we actually just partnered with them to help service your fleet of boats around the country. Um, we also provide our marine professionals with real-time lead alerts. So we provide them with alerts via text, uh, via email, and via phone. And we've got the SEO expertise it takes to, to not only launch this thing and be su as successful as we've been already, but to also scale it in a very efficient manner nationwide. Uh, a couple of reasons why we think we're the best team to kind of tackle this problem in the boating industry. So both co-founders, um, we're both boaters and have an intimate understanding of, the, of kind of the problems that boaters face. Uh, we also have experience starting and growing several companies. So prior to Boat Planet, um, I co-founded a internet marketing agency here in St. Louis. Um, grew that to be one of the top HubSpot partners out there, and actually grew that to that company to one million in annual recurring revenue. My co-founder Chris, uh, he founded a geospatial utility company. Uh, grew that to 350 plus employees and sold that to a publicly traded company. And then Corey, our lead developer, has more than 18 years of full stack development experience. So what are we looking for? Um, we're looking to raise $575,000 in our seed round. Uh, that's gonna help us hire a growth team, uh, help us continue building those strategic partnerships like we have with Boat Center, and continue expanding Boat Planet nationwide. And our vision is to connect the nationwide community of boat owners with trusted marine professionals that really provide that exceptional service that everyone's kind of looking for. And that's it. Thanks, I'm Michael Keel with Boat Planet. Please um, raise your hand and wait for the microphone to ask questions. Who would like to start? Do you have any plans to sell advertising spots? Yeah, so right now, um, basically the, how the platform works is, um, basically a lot, a lot of these businesses that we've uploaded, there's 3,000 businesses we've uploaded. They've got the profile on our site ready to go. What they do is they come on and they claim their business, kind of like you do on Yelp or Google My Business or some of those other platforms. So they come on, claim their business. When they claim their business, they're offered three different marketing plans. The free plan, um, the $99 a month plan, and then a $250 a month plan as well. Um, the $99 a month plan gets them like, featured in three different service categories, provides them with some real-time lead alerts and things like that. The other plan um, <clears throat> provides them with all of that in more service categories, but also with some marketing support. So we help them get five-star reviews, we help them upload their projects and their project photos and things like that. We actually do some Facebook advertising for them, targeting the specific voters in their specific market. So we kind of become a little bit of a marketing arm for them in that premium package. What about for like, uh, you know, Boat Trader or, or the Green, Green One or people that just sell supplies? Yeah, so, so right now it's the platform's mostly service-based. So any kind of service that you need done on your boat, dock, lift, etc. cetera. Um, plans are, if we are able to get enough funding to actually get into products um, and actually potentially even get into sales. I mean, brokers are charging 10% to list a boat. That's way too high if you ask me. We can bring that down to 5%, do it all online and capture a big chunk of the market by doing something like that, so. Okay, other than the Coast Guard, is there a AAA for boats? 
There is. There's two companies that I'm aware of, Sito and Boat US. It's for emergency breakdowns only, and they basically tow your boat to a to either back to your dock or to a marina, where then work can be done. Because it seems to me that that uh, marinas and boat repair folks who would like to be able to do the fixing and then become the trusted partner should get involved in that. And that's I th that might be an opportunity for you. Also, um, any university that has a marine biology organization to it. Are there any? Yeah, there, there are plenty of, of um, research vessels out there that need oh, yeah. repairs from time to time. Yeah, so we're right now we're more focused on the recreational um, okay. side of the market, but yeah, we can definitely get an industrial. All right, because I can hook you up with fishing boats out of Port Jefferson, New York. Yeah, no, that'd be awesome. I mean. These guys can help everything from a you know recreational boater to a commercial fisherman. Okay, the other be. question I have is, um, you said that uh, the premium package is two hundred fifty dollars yep. a month, but then you had a graphic up there that said fifty one hundred times five hundred dollars a month. Yeah, where so where does our, that come from? So our pricing, it's already increasing. We we've, we've already proven our value, literally going up. I mean, February we're increasing it. Um, so eventually, yeah, we'll, we'll very easily be able to charge at least $500,000 a month to these guys. The reason being, the value we're providing, these services, this isn't like a $100 service. If you have your boat looked at, it's usually a minimum of $1,000. If you buy a dock, if you buy a lift, you're talking ten to hundreds of thousands of dollars. So the leads are worth so much money that we know we can be charging more than we're charging. Any core customer? profile currently and what is it going to be in the future say like two years yeah so kind of a two-sided kind of platform here right so we've got the boater side of things um, but they're not paying so they're free to be on the platform and use it um, so the, the side that's paying are, are the marine businesses um, as far as a profile goes right now I we've got everything from a franchise uh, boat lift company that's got dealers all over the United States to um, you know, a two-man detailing shop, to a big marina with 50 plus employees. So it, it varies. Are you working with um, crewing or staffing services as well for larger vessels? We're, yeah. we're, we're not. There's kind of already some solutions for those. Um, so we're, we're really staying focused on what, where we know kind of the need is right now, but you know. What does it look like for you when you enter a new market? Good question. Um, so it's kind of cool how we enter new markets. Um, instead of us, you know, creating a Facebook group and sponsoring events and spending tens of thousands of dollars on branding, like we did, like in the Ozarks, to kind of get that first push, what we're able to do in these other markets is we've um, basically found there's these marine associations out there, kind of like trade associations. So um, every state has like a let's say. South Florida Marine Trade Association. There's like 800 businesses that are paying to be a part of that association that have to, have to have certain standards. We're literally able to go scrape all that data, make it usable, put them in the 230 different service categories they might be, and then put them on our website. And then we actually, at some point, we haven't done it yet, but at some point we're gonna actually send out an email saying, hey, we invited you to become a trusted marine professional on our platform, please claim your business and review information to make sure it's correct. At that point, they're in the sales process. They're seeing, they're, you know, we've got a chat box that pops up, they're seeing the three different packages. It's very easy for us to kind of enter those markets, and then they'll actually find us by either Googling their name, or they're actually gonna be getting leads from us. And they're gonna be like, who's Boat Planet? And click on, you know, the lead email and say, oh, shoot, I need to claim my business on this platform. And how do those people with boats find you? Like, how do you get those leads? Or to the providers? Yeah, good question. So we've got a social media following of over 45,000 right now, um, but really the majority of our traffic comes organically. We rank at the top of Google for almost any search you can do. I'll give you an example if you don't trust me. Google boat flooring, like in the Ozarks, we are the top six results on Google. I've never even seen something like that. So that's my, my whole background is SEO, my whole background is inbound marketing. Um, so we basically just structured our platform in a way that when we enter a new market, we literally create 230 new searchable service categories in every single new market that we we branch out into. So all that traffic starts coming in organically over time. Awesome. Yeah, thanks. thanks.
Hi there. Hey. Wonderful presentation. Thanks. Um, I was actually wondering. Um, oh, sorry, breaking up. <laughs> hello. Hello. Uh, so, what determines uh, a new market for you guys? I mean, after all, you could have you know. Uh, I'm, I'm from the state of Washington, and like, yep. you know, the waterways are all really interconnected, so that could be considered one market. Or you could, you know, like go more granular and say, okay, like Lake Washington market versus, um, you know, the Skykomish market, or, you know, yeah. whatever. No. How do you guys actually, like, stop from cannibalizing? Yeah, good question. So, I'm trying to find that slide. So, these 115 boating markets you see here, um, Boat Setter has actually done a lot of this research that we're, we partnered with, and they were nice enough to literally provide us with latitude, longitude, coordinates, and the names of these markets. So this was like their first, this is data from like years ago when they first launched. They're actually, since we have this new partnership with them, as they build out their new markets, and they've got like 30 million in funding, so it's much easier for them to do it, they're literally sending us that data and saying, okay, we now have boats in this market, we need we now need you to have businesses in this market to service these boats. Okay, so their API is basically like helping to feed and inform you, know, you guys. Yeah, I mean, they're it. literally handing us over their, yeah. their voting okay. markets. Right. Yeah, and they're doing the, kind of the research for us, so it's nice. Nice to piggyback. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thanks. All right, more questions? Mel, you got a question? Sorry. That's good. No. All about the they are fabulous. Oh, okay. Oh, Mary's got another one. I go along with so I can get coffee. What's the next market you're looking at after Lake Louisa? Um, right now, we're going to put a big emphasis on South Florida. It's the largest boating market out there. Um, it's year-round boating. Not that, and to kind of hit on that, a lot of people think this stuff's seasonal. When something goes majorly wrong with your boats, a lot, or let's say you want to upgrade something that takes a while, you don't want to do that in July when your boat's gonna be out of the water for two weeks. So a lot of these projects, a lot of these things that can wait, wait until the winter. So there's a lot of storage that happens, there's a lot of dewinterization, or there's a lot of winterization that happens, and there's a lot of big projects that happen in the winter. Um, but Florida does present the opportunity to just have full year-round services happening, and the number of businesses down there far exceeds any other market, and boaters. Okay, so you'll find the businesses that'll subscribe by finding the trade associations in these markets? So we've, we've actually already uploaded 800 plus businesses from the South Florida Marine Trade Association. Um, yeah, so they're actually already on our platform. They just don't know they're on our platform yet because we just put them on. And I'm assuming that, excuse me, the boaters that use the services can break the business. Yep, so platform, how it kind of works from boaters standpoint. Um, after, they don't, I mean, it doesn't have to be after they do business. If they want to just come on our platform and review a business, they create a profile, uh, they leave a review, that review does not go live for 48 hours, it gives the business a chance to flag that review if it's just a spam review. Um, so we, if it gets flagged, we then re we then take a look at the review, make sure it's legit, and then it, we then set it as live once it looks good. Sounds like, sounds like a great business plan. Yeah, thanks. Um, I guess the last question would be, what can the community do for you? Yeah, so um, I think we've you know had a lot of success. Um, obviously, we launched at Lake of the Ozarks, where I had my boat. So I had to unfortunately sell my boat to continue funding this. Um, so right now, it's kind of like we need money. Um, I think the big thing for us is we've, we've sat down with a lot of investors. Um, this is a very niche kind of market. You either get it or you don't. Um, you know, as well as I can try to explain this, I think that us finding investors that actually are boat owners or have some kind of experience with boating, I think that's an easier sell. Um, I also think that, uh, you know, we've we've sat down with a lot of, I think, VC firms and th things like that. I think we're too early for that. I think they want to see more revenue, which we're getting there. So I think, you know, getting introduced to more of those kind of angel investor kind of networks that are willing to kind of come on prior to, um, you know, us having 100,000 in monthly recurring revenue or something like that. I mean, that's hard to do with one person doing sales. Um, but yeah, I think just, you know, support. I mean, the support here has already been awesome. Um, and, you know, getting those introductions to people that kind of see this vision and are interested in investing in it. In the back. All right, hold on. I'll bring it to you. Sorry, one more question. It sounds like, you know, you guys are basically kind of like the Yelp of 
you know, boat services. Yep. Uh, how do you guys tackle things like, you know, whenever there's, uh, you know, uh, like you were talking about filtering reviews. So I know that they have their own review, you know, like filtering system. Um, but sometimes legit reviews get caught up in that or else, you know, like business owners can petition to have negative reviews erased. Yeah. And so how do you guys deal with that to maintain the, the integrity of the site? Because of course that reputation is everything. Exactly, yeah, great question. So from the beginning, um, I've always been pretty anti-Yelp. I've, I've gotten those really spammy, salesy calls from them that say like, oh, we'll feature your review if you pay us. Like, I, I and that's kind of, I wanted to be the opposite of that. So what we've told businesses is we're, we're very business friendly. So you can't just say, oh, I don't like this business or I, don't, or I thought the pricing was too high. You literally have to do business with that company and there has to be proof that you did business with that company. And as long as you did business with that company and let's say you leave a negative review, that's fine. We're gonna always give that business an opportunity to make it right. So when we see that review come through and let's say it gets flagged and the business says, hey, I never had an opportunity. I didn't even know about this. They never even told us about this problem. We then reach out to the business and we're gonna actually work with the business to try to make it better. If we can't make it better, then that review is obviously gonna stay. Um, the, you know, the good five-star reviews, we've already taken down some where the business owner like literally creates an old, his own five-star review for himself and we see those and we take them down. Um, but yeah, I mean, eventually, as we get tens of thousands of reviews, we're gonna, there's gonna have to probably be some things that flag, you know, some internal flagging going on. Um, but for now, it's, 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 we can handle it on our own at the moment. Oh, yeah. uh, it's a yes or no question. <laughs> no, no. Nobody wants to sit. Um, so, when you're talking about searching for investors, have you only looked in the Midwest markets or have you talked to any like Miami or Naples investors yet? Because the West, yeah, West Palm is good. Yeah. Um, need to start doing that. Okay. Well, because I would have been very surprised. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, 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 it's, it's, it's more been St. Louis so far. I mean, okay. we, we applied to like 30 different accelerators across the United States. We actually just came out of an accelerator in Dallas. Um, yeah. But yeah, I've also I've also got another friend who's got a boating related platform called Anchor. Um, he actually moved his business down to Tampa because he said it's he goes, dude, it's easier to get money down here. People get it. Like it's not as hard as hard of a sell. You, you don't um, need to move down there. For that. No, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. Okay. So uh, I, I'm, I'm just saying um, he had some difficulty, kind of, you know, with it's the vision the here. Yeah, it's a much different environment. I think once we, the good thing is my co-founder spends a lot of time in Florida. He's got, actually has a boat that he, he boats down there during the winter. He can very easily start talking to people he knows and kind of start pitching this, so. So I have some brass tax questions. So yeah. We can talk about it offline if you prefer, but I'm interested in what kind of revenue you guys are seeing, how long it's taken to get there. Um, I know you're targeting 15% of that 34,000. Yeah service provider market, but I'm interested in how many of those you actually have today. And that all ties into the bigger question of how much money are you looking for? Yeah. Because that'll affect which types of investors you go after and where they are. For sure. Um, so right now, so we just launched these paid plans. Um, and by just launched, I mean I started sales in 2020. Awesome. And um, so I think, but I'm not sure they- someone is paying you Something. Yeah, so that's amazing. so we do have revenue. Um, I think it's about thirteen hundred a month right now. It's recurring though, so that's good, and we're continuing to build that. Probably got another couple deals. I'm hopefully going to close this week. Um, most of those guys are picking our two hundred fifty dollar a month plan, the premium plan. So that's good because obviously the two hundred fifty dollar a month plan is worth more than the ninety nine dollar a month plan. Also shows us that these guys, you know, aren't scared to pay a little more money. Yeah. yeah. Um, I would say, so, so far, those businesses that have signed up are out of the like 200 Lake of the Ozarks businesses. So the businesses that already knew about us, um, that might have already been receiving some leads from us, um, and we basically reached out and said, hey, you're already getting this value from our platform. Let me show you how I can get you more value from our platform. Here's a couple different options for it. About how much money are you guys looking to take on? Um, so, our calculations are basically that we need 575,000 to grow this in the manner that we need to for the next 12 months. That keeps us cash flow positive. We could take a 
another round after that, a Series A round of a couple million dollars. We don't need to, um, but that will open up a lot more opportunities for us in terms of products, e-commerce, apps, um, even getting into like brokerage, things like that. But for so now- if you guys take this to South Florida, especially the Atlantic side, West Palm and further south, you can get two or three high net worth individuals to write one or two or three checks. And yeah. that's your entire 2020. Yeah, you need to so, probably go down I there. Mean, I would focus your efforts. <laughs> Missouri is not known for taking risks. Yeah. South Florida folks, you know, a lot of them live in Boston and New York and DC and they understand the conversation you're having. Yeah. Okay, thanks, appreciate it. And you can ride off the whole trip. Yeah. <laughs> if you need Rent a boat while I'm down there from Boat yeah. Center and write the whole thing off. <laughs> um, how would you allocate that $575,000 to grow for the next 12 months and then where are you looking for St. Louis investors right now? Yeah, good question. So first part of that, um, most of it right now is gonna go towards uh, sales and growth. So um, sales team, I've got a guy actually who grew the sales teams for both the Yelp and White Key. He's got a lot of experience with selling stuff like this. Um, he's ready to come on as soon as we find an investor to kind of help fund that. Um, and then obviously, you know, we're gonna need some marketing support and some account management support once we start bringing on all those new clients. Um, and then what, sorry, what's the second part? Uh, where are you looking for St. Louis investors? Like what sort of crowds have you been like looking to and you say you've been like looking in this market? I haven't done a lot of looking yet. Like I said, I've been, been busy with an accelerator program down in Dallas, kind of just got back um, in December from that. Um, been trying to do as many pitches as I can. Um, sat down with a couple investors here in St. Louis. Um, I've got an, actually, a, a great introduction to Brunswick. Brunswick owns like 50 plus of the top marine brands in the United States. They actually are looking at possibly doing a corporate um, investment and partnership with us. Uh, we can provide a ton of value to all their brands. So I'm, I'm on my like third call with those guys right now um, and hoping that kind of goes somewhere because that would be an investment um, as well as like mentorship and support um, and then also connecting us with all those brands which would be awesome. That was gonna be my last question, is like a Brunswick or like a tracker in this area. Yeah. It's like, like, I don't know if it'd be CBC, but a company like that being able to, they've got the resources to play with Yeah, them. we're we're like praying that that thing works out. I mean, that'd be, that'd be great for us, so. All right, well, I think that's it. All right, thanks All a lot, right. guys, thanks appreciate much. it.